What's up, my guys, and welcome back to this god awful show. I'm your host, Cody. Now, uh, I'm pretty sure my AC like just went out on me, so that's tight. It's only 113 degrees here in Oklahoma, but hey, I'll tell you what, if y'all see me in here sweating like a whore in church, just know that my ass ain't in church right now. How you doing? But enough about all that. Let's talk some damn wrestling. Now, what we do here on the show, the wrestling report card, is I take a wrestling show. I break down every match. I give them each a letter grade, and at the end, oh, I tally this son of bitches up to give that show its own report card. And tonight, I'm bringing you the August 7th edition of AEW Dynamite. I'm going to shine it up real nice. Turn that son of bitch sideways, and let's get to graded. My guy, but foist our AEW trivia question of the night. In what city did Jonathan Moxley make his AEW Dynamite debut? Let us know your answer in the comments below, but let's dive in. Kicking this son of a bitch off tonight, we have the mandatory meeting call from the Jericho Society because last week Jericho seemingly turned his back on Danny Garcia and by seemingly, I mean that Chris Jericho watched Don Callis crack Daniel Garcia in the head with a baseball bat and then that rat face cracker ran over, made the cover and got the one, two, three over him. So with them all in the ring tonight, Danny Garcia was the first one to bounce on Jericho, and I mean rightfully so, and that started a domino effect because then we watched Hager along with the rest of the crew walk off on Jericho as well, and then we even heard Daddy Magic name drop Kevin Steen. Hey, what up, KO? So one by one, they all left until it was just Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara left alone in the ring, and ladies and gentlemen, I hate to be the one to break it to you, but let sex gods are no moss. Sammy left to leaving Y2J all alone in. Yeah, I got to admit, this was way better than I thought it was going to be. There were times where I was like, hey, who the hell's cutting Sepoyas up in here? But for that, I'm going to slap a B plus on that son bitch. Now, let's get into some action. For the first time ever on live TV, we have two of the most iconic tag teams of their generations going at it. That's right. You have the Young Bucks, who are arguably the tag team of this generation, going up against their idols. And mine as well, the Hardy Boys in a generational matchup pairing brothers versus brothers. And even though the Hardy Boys are getting older, we can't deny it. We still got to see all the classics we love, like the side effect. Twist of Fate, Whisper in the Wind, and Jeff even hit the Swanton, that crazy son bitch. But even all of that wasn't enough because the Young Bucks kicked out, rallied, and they ended up hitting the BTE trigger onto Matt, and ain't nobody kicking out of that, my guy. They get the one, two, three, and we got to see a pretty dope moment between them and the Hardy Boys, but... After the match, the Young Bucks looked to answer FTR's challenge, but out came the champs, and we all know the history here. It's always a tense moment when these four share the ring. And at Wembley Stadium at All In in front of 70,000, these two teams battle once again to claim who is the greatest tag team of this generation. I tell you what, I'm gonna slap a B on that son bitch. Now we go from one legend to another. As you got R, V, D, going one-on-one -on -one with Jack Perry for the FTW title. And yeah, Rob Van Dam may look a little older, but I tell you what, that son bitch was still out there moving like a cruiserweight. Remember, this was far under FTW rules, which means anything goes. You had furniture lying everywhere. These two were still going back and forth, going at it when Jungle Boy grabbed a chair and launched it, but RVD Doug sending that son of a bitch straight into the ref's face. Next thing you know, Perry went crashing through a table. So RVD, being the bet that he is, capitalized quickly, dragging him into the ring, hitting him with a five star frog splash, but there's no ref. Thankfully, Aubrey came running down, but it was too late. Not only did Jack Perry kick out, but that little bastard hit RVD with a low blow in front of Aubrey. Remember, FTW, there's no rules before sending him headfirst into a chair, making the cover, and getting the one, two, three over the legend. Yeah, 
That was great. RVD, he still got it. Y'all should really go check him out if you were a fan back in the day. I'm going to slap a B-plus on that son bitch, but we got to keep the ball rolling up next. You got MJF and Adam Cole, and I got to say, these two have been great together all summer, and now that they're going to be headlining all in against each other, there's no telling where this will go. Like the Ring of Honor tag titles, for example. So yeah, I guess in the zero hour of All In at Wembley Stadium, Adam Cole and MJF will challenge Aussie Open for the Ring of Honor Tag Team Championships. Now you had those two in the ring when next thing you know, oh jealous ass, stick neck having ass, Roddy Strong came out and said, really Adam? You're going to win the titles with this guy. Now, Roddy, you should have stayed your ass in the back because MJF just flamed his ass up, sitting him walking off crying with his new pals. Really, Adam? You're going to let him talk to me like that? Now, Adam Cole, you cross the line like you always do. Go ahead and ask my guy Pat McAfee when you shoved MJF, but he got smart quickly and apologized. Now, reluctantly, it seemed. MJF hugged it out with him, and then he said, go check on your boy, and if you know anything in that situation, if somebody's calling Roddy Strong, your boy, oh yeah, he's pissed. MJF, pissed Adam Cole, you getting dog walked at all in, and I feel like CM Punk's gonna somehow pop up in that match, but hey, that's for another video. For what we just saw right there, that was great. I'm gonna slap a B on that son bitch, but now let's get him back into some action. Up next, you got the Blackpool Combat Club going against the Lucha Bros. And if you have never seen the Lucha Bros in action, go on and do yourself a favor and check them out, my guy. Now, you take them, add in a little Claudio plus Moxley's crazy ass. Now we cooking. At one point, you had Pinta and Moxley out there just slapping the titty meat off of each other. Next thing you know, Ray Phoenix took flight, wiping out Yuna on the outside. But back in the ring, Somehow Moxley rolled up Penta, giving them the one, two, three, and we missed it, but I guess they ended up ripping off Penta's mask, but the cameras were still on the action outside, and look, I'm just going to be honest here, AEW, we got to get a little bit better with that camera work, it seems like every week we missing something, but hey, it's alright, that match was still phenomenal, I'm going to slap an A- on that son bitch. next, we got the Mogul Embassy in the ring, with their newest member, AR Fox, who apparently... Wants a piece of Darby Allen's ass. So Darby came out and said, oh, you got yourself some new friends? Don't forget, I got friends too. Then the lights go out. And by God, it's Sting. He walked down late, Swerve out with that bat. Then took that same bat while staring down Swerve. Pointed at the all-in poster in the corner. So it looks like it's going to be Sting and Darby versus Swerve and AR Fox at all in yeah sting with three dudes that can just absolutely go give it to me that's what i'm talking about i'm gonna slap a b on that son bitch but hey that's enough of the talk because it's time for the main event you got hikaru shida in her first defense it's knocking off tony storm last week taking on anna J. where the winner of this will move on to join tony storm in the fatal four-way at all in but tonight the title's on the line. Now look, when we say we want more focus on the AEW Women's Division, that don't mean just grab two girls, throw them in the main event, and put the title on the line just because it's a main event spot. Give them a storyline, give them some time, and let them build something because you know if, if given to them, they going to deliver. There's way too much talent in that locker room. That's all I'm going to say about that. Either way, tonight, Sheeta starts her second title reign off the right way with the win over Anna Jay as now her and Tony Storm will await their next two opponents for all in in that fatal four-way match. I tell you what, with all that being said, I'm going to slap a C-plus on that son bitch there, but y'all know what part of the show we've gotten to. We got all the grades in. Now let's take a look at the report card, my guy. After tallying everything up, we came out with a final letter grade of... A B, that's right, in 86%. Well done right there, Dynamite. Hopefully we get some more build-up heading towards All In. What's going to go on with the world title, the TNT title, the TBS title? There's a lot to build up. But other than that, well done. Like I said tonight, I'm your host, Cody. I'm signing off. Shout out to OG Bobby Knifehawk for the beat. If you haven't already, like, comment, 
you could even subscribe to the channel. It won't hurt you, I promise. But I hope all you BEA beautiful people stay safe out there and have a nice day.